And today we're going to talk about common skin diseases. The three common skin conditions that we see in primary care would be eczema, acne and psoriasis. These are the three common uh, conditions we see in our day-to-day -day clinic. First, we talk about eczema, which is a very common skin disease. And it is char characterized clinically by extreme itchiness, dryness and scaling. And it may present with uh, acute uh, onset, or it may be so acute, or it may become chronic, where patient may have it for months or years. And it can affect, and uh, but it's more common in children, and uh, but it can also happen in adults too. As you can see from the picture here, this is an example of an eczema where you can see the skin is dry, there's some scaling, and patient may feel a lot of itchiness. There are many types of eczema actually. So the, for the management of eczema, it is important that um, the mainly we have to make sure uh, the skin is uh, properly moisturized. So a lot of time we use conservative method is to uh, avoid the trigger, use a lot of emollient such as uh, aqueous cream or emulsifying ointment to make sure the skin are, is properly uh, moisturized. And sometimes we have to use other specific methods such as the to topical steroids. Uh, we have to remember that on the face uh, and scalp and in children, we try to avoid strong steroid, so we use hydrocord uh, on the on on this area because the skin in on this area are thinned. So if a uh, strong strong steroid may cause problem, and um, the moderate to potent topical steroids uh, would be you know we we'll be using a uh, bacomethazone and more metazone and all that would be in other skin area uh, other than the, that I have described above. And also uh, use of uh, topical steroids is limited to two weeks. And um, so, uh, and uh, this, the use of this, we need physician approval to, to extend the use because using more than two weeks may cause side effect like skin thinning and all the other problems. Another common skin condition is acne. In layman term, it's usually called pimper. And then um, it actually affects about 20% of the population. And uh, usually it affects teenagers when they are in a lot of hormonal changes when they are at their puberty. And uh, it may subside later when they are, you know, the hormonal changes are more stable in their adulthood. And uh, usually it will subside before the age of 40. The main, uh, or the main factors that causing uh, acne would be increase in the sebum production. As the teenager, they undergoing hormonal changes, they have increased sebum production. This will uh, make them more prone to getting acne. And also uh, dark hyperproliferation uh, and also chronic infection of the dark with bacteria and chronic inflammation. All these will contribute to the formation of acne. The clinical features of acne include papules, macules, and also nodules or pustule when it's more severe. And uh, sometimes um, they also have a lot of like seborrhea, which is greasiness. And then later on, it may form scar. And also uh, they may have post inflammatory uh, information. This picture show an example of acne. As you can see, there are some uh, papules and macules and also some information uh, on the face. Management of acne 
should be targeted to the chronic inflammation as well as the effect on the psychological health of the patient. This is especially among teenagers. They will have a lot of psychological uh, issue, uh, very severe acne. And uh, so many management or treatment available for acne would be mainly a lot we use are the topical treatment with um, benzoyl peroxide, uh, retinoid, and also antibiotic. So, but sometimes we may have to use antibiotics and also uh, oral isotretinoid. Oral isotretinoid is usually the the, um, the third line of treatment uh, because it is. Uh, having her uh, toxicity uh, problems. Uh, it may have teratogenic effect and also hepatotoxicity, meaning affecting the liver. So usually it will only be prescribed by the certified dermatologist. And uh, so uh, all this treatment, actually it takes time to uh, see the effect. So regardless of what treatment the patient have taken, an early effect may only be seen after one or two months of use. So uh, that's why we may need to use the therapy for at least three to six months or more before we say that it is not effective and we need to go for other uh, uh, options. Another common skin problem would be cysts. It affects 2 to 3% of the population and uh, it is usually char characterized by heavy scaling and red severely scales which may or may not be itchy and it can demonstrate corpner phenomenon but it, it, this phenomenon may also occur in other conditions like, like complainers, vitiligo and viral warts. There are many types of psoriasis, which including uh, chronic plaques, uh, palm oil planning on it, uh, many affect the palm and the sole, and gutter uh, psoriasis, and also uh, other uh, more severe form like erythromic psoriasis and generalized patchural psoriasis. These are more severe ones. And psoriasis can also involve the nails and the scalp. So when you examine patients with psoriasis or suspect psoriasis, it's always you have to remember to examine the nails and also the scalp. This photo shows an example of uh, psoriasis. You can see clearly there are a lot of psoriasis, psoriasis uh, plaques with redness and scaling. The treatment of psoriasis depends on the severity of it. Uh, of course, this would include the avoidance of potential triggers drugs like beta blocker and lithium. Uh, and also, in addition, we may need to use topical therapy, which include like uh, emollium, uh, corticosteroid, corta, and detrinol. And sometimes we may have to use ultraviolet therapy and immunosuppressive therapy for those that are not responding. And for nail and joint psoriasis, we may need to use oral immunosuppressants such as like uh, metotase, cyclosporine, and oral retinoid. And but this patient needs frequent monitoring for side effects. Okay, we are coming to the end of this part of lecture and thank you for uh, listening to this lecture and don't forget to complete the learning activities.